is Reverend Rick McCain. And I'm the Brenda McCain, and you're listening to Let's Stay Together Talk. Come on board the McCain train and take a two-hour ride with us. As we discuss topics like the next stop and making marriage work. So get your tickets now before the train leaves the station. Thanks for joining us. Take a seat on our train. You just arrived at Let's Stay Together Talk. All right, all right. Welcome to the Let's Stay Together show. I'm your host, Reverend Rick McCain, now known as Jess Rick McCain, <laughs> with my baby, my girl, my boo, Brenda McCain of 22 years, my covenant partner that I love and cut me off on the other show. Hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Rick. <laughs> hey, Rick. Now she's dry and stuff like that. How you doing, baby? I'm doing great, and you're doing great, too, We're right? doing great. I'm doing great because I got you. I got you, babe. No, no, no. Don't sing. Oh, now you're the one that can't sing. No, now, no, come you, on. You can't sing. You be, you be like slash, slash, slashing the hits on WJCW. Dot com. That's so good. <laughs> I do, don't I? I sound good. No, she's talking about I did that so good, not you. <laughs> well, this other lady that's on the mic is Tracy, so she's not on my side today. That's Tracy I, Brown. You know, Howard. Did that. Hi, y'all. He just did that so good. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> we got a great show coming up, and I want to say, miss my Tracy. I haven't seen her since last week and haven't seen you since this morning. So yeah, I'm a... missing y'all. Glad you guys made it back on the train. And we're going to have a great, great show. We want to thank our listeners for listening in and joining us back on the McCain train this week. Why? Because to see God's glory, we must share our backstories. Now, tonight, our topic, getting us ready for Easter, is about Resurrection Day focus. Quick, quick little read on this. Let's try to stay focused on the real season for Easter celebration. Even though it's been a tradition that we dress up particularly on this day more so than any other Sunday, this is another day that we should be great witnesses for God. So joining us tonight, we have on the next stop, a witness opportunity is our subtopic. We have the anointed preacher, Psalmist and dynamic spirit, Pastor Dr. Lynn Williams of City of Believer Outreach Ministries. Dr. Lynn, are you on the line, darling? Hi, yes, I am. Can hey. you hear me good? How you doing? Yeah, we can hear you. So she says you are what spiritual? What? What was all? I mean, it sounds so oh, good. Oh, she is I an know, she did. <laughs> Psalmist and dynamic spirit. Wow, that sounds good. You know. Heck, I'm about to get ready to go to the church now. (laughs) 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 My goodness. Uh, uh, Lynn, how are you doing today? I am very good, very good. I'm grateful to be here. Uh, Honored. We're honored to have you here, too. So we're talking about, you know, uh, Resurrection um, uh, Day, the focus on that. And we notice we get a lot of people who, you know, focus on uh, the resurrection. And we're talking about how people would dress up and, and the focus is not brought back to uh, the real meaning of, of resurrection focus. Can you explain a little bit uh, about what that meaning is when we talk about resurrection? Absolutely. You know, in the, in the, in the Bible, in the Greek language, the word uh, resurrection is anastasis. And it simply means to stand upright again, to stand up again. And without Christ Jesus, finishing what he needed to do for us in order for us to be able to stand up again, both spiritually as well as naturally, he had to do, you know, he had to bring forth the resurrection. We focus a lot of times around Easter. We focus on the clothes and all the Easter songs and Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff. And we even talk about the work that he did at the cross, and it was significant. Everything, every detail in the plan of salvation for us is important, but I believe That is very pivotal. The resurrection is very pivotal because it wasn't enough for Jesus Christ to just come. It wasn't enough for him to be born of a virgin. It wasn't enough for him to um, to be uh, to to suffer in Gethsemane. It wasn't enough for him to be whipped and beaten beyond recognition and be nailed to the cross. He had to. It had to be finished. You know, we, the resurrection was important because without that resurrection, we would still be in our sins, according to First Corinthians 15. We would still yet be in our sins. So we have to, I firmly believe, 
refocus and really focus more on the resurrection, what he did for me, bearing my sins. And I think, for, I know it's been times in my life where I fail to really pay attention or really zone in on the fact that my sins have not been charged unto me. They have been imputed unto Jesus Christ. And he did it for me so that I could be a part of the resurrection. The scriptures tell us that without the resurrection, if Jesus didn't rise up, then we would be uh, still in our sins. He says that our preaching would be in vain. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 15. Our preaching would be in vain. Our living would be in vain. Uh, uh, we would be men without any kind of hope if all we have is the life right here to hope in with Christ and that's it. We would be men most miserable. So the resurrection is pivotal in, in, in what's happening on this Sunday and that should be our focus on the fact that he got up. And I know sometimes people even say that uh, Calvary is the place where victory was won but I don't believe that victory was won at Calvary. I believe that victory was wrought for us in Gethsemane. He, we, we won the victory. He won it for us in Gethsemane when he pressed past the agony that he was in to still endure and drink the cup that God had told him to drink. Because we, uh, uh, if you look in uh, Luke 22, and you'll see when he says, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will. And the next verse after, I think it's about verse 43, the next verse says that the angel of the Lord from heaven came and strengthened him. That was his answer to the prayer. God wasn't going to change the situation. You still got to do what I want you to do, but I'm going to send you strength from heaven. You know, so I think it's really, go ahead. I'll tell you, this, I really like the fact that you said that, you know, that it was before the sins, because a lot of times people will say that if Jesus didn't die, uh, uh, Christianity would not be valid. And I'm saying that Jesus didn't have to die for Christianity to be valid. He died for the <laughs> sins of the world because Jesus yeah. already showed he had power over death over Jairus' daughter and when he brought Lazarus mm -hmm. back from the dead. So he already showed he had power over death. And so to say that if he didn't die, that it wouldn't be a validation for Christianity is wrong. But he died so that we could have, you know, the cleansing of our sins and have a relationship right. with Jesus. I mean, the Lord God, our Savior. So I am happy that you said that because there's always someone thinking that, well, he had to die. I said, no, he died because he okay. wanted to show that he had power over all. But he died so we had so our sins could be cleansed and wiped, yeah. you know, uh, cleansed as white as snow, that we would have a relationship with God. Amen. You know, Amen. So, uh, you know, totally. so that, that's something important, you know, that and I like to, you know, share. And you said something else that I, I just wanted to share something real quick. The restraint, the restraint that Jesus went through. Here is a man mm -hmm. who had power over all things. He, he just told yeah. uh, a soldier, uh, your daughter would be healed. But for him to go through uh, the restraint of not using that power, the humility that he had during the resurrection, mm -hmm. to not use his power to go through and allow someone to whoop him and beat him. Wow. I mean, it's for someone to have that kind of a power, and I kind of translate that with what's going on in the world today with Christians, we have the power to allow people to do wrong against us because we can go to God, mm -hmm. our Savior, but in some cases we get angry and we don't we don't allow that resurrection power to allow us to have humility to just allow things to happen mm. but go to God and say, you know, God, you know, resolve this issue. We don't have that strength or that restraint and that humility to not allow people to trouble us or to burden us or or come against us. We always want to fight back instead of realizing mm -hmm. that with that restraint we give we give God the power to work in our behalf. That's, yeah, that's great what you just said, Rick. But from human yeah. nature, we always like when somebody wrong, Lynn, Brenda, or Tracy, or Rick, we want to fight back. But we do know vengeance is God. So when God whoops someone, that's a whooping you will never ever forget, or that person would never mm -hmm. ever forget. But we don't think of it that way. We think of I got to handle it now. Not that we don't trust God, but you know sometimes mm -hmm. you have to have that patience and have that faith walk with God, and we don't have that. So right now, you know, when going back to our main topic here about witnessing, Lynn, I want to know, do you think that this is a, the, one of the best times to actually witness for Christ right now? Of all the holidays, like, because for, for Christians, we mm -hmm. validate this as being our, 
our main thing about um, our main thing about Christ right now is fact that the He resurrected is proof that there is Jesus Christ. He died for our sins, and a lot of people say, "Well, you could do that any time." But I notice now around Easter, this is the time that a lot of people jump on board and start mm-hmm. witnessing for Christ. I really believe that it should never be a special season or time when we should be at the height or the pinnacle of our witnessing. We're supposed to witness. It should be our daily cry or request from the Father. Lord, who am I to minister this gospel to today? That, that It shouldn't be Christmas only. It shouldn't be Thanksgiving. It shouldn't just be Easter or, you know, we just hype up with special holidays when the truth of the matter is we're the salt of the earth. We're the light. We're supposed to be doing this 365 days of the year. We're supposed to always be on 10 as far as he is concerned. We shouldn't have to wait for Easter to take it. This is my chance to really witness now it's Easter. Because the truth of the matter, a lot of us, we still don't do it at Easter. We just get excited and doctor mm-hmm. on the same people that come to church. Mm-hmm. You know, to the same people that come to church. So I, I, I think that every opportunity, every season, every holiday, we, we need to focus on. Because I can really... To be truthful, I don't really focus in on the fact that a certain holiday is coming up, and so this is the time for me to up my witnessing. And you know what my, happens? My witness. Yeah, you know what happens a lot of times when people do come to church, uh, Lynn, on uh, on Easter. I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of them are, are not even looking to be witness to. It's just a ritual uh-huh, right. for them, and so right. you you're talking to them on that day. It, it, the, the focus is almost lost, and it's sad to say that. Yeah. But a lot of times when they come there, they're so realistic. They're, they're so so into the fact that they're there because they're dressed up, or they got this Easter mm-hmm. outfit, and and now I got to go get my eggs. It almost seems like their their thought process is not even there to receive the power of the resurrection. So, Lynn, talk to me a little bit about how can we how can, how do you change that focus? knowing that they're really not there to, to hear anything about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I think we can do our part by not commercializing our services. Yeah. I think we need to stick to the, to the main thing. My mommy used to always say, baby, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. And I said, what is that mommy? And she said, Jesus Christ and him crucified and resurrected. Mm-hmm. That's the main thing on every service, every Sunday, every plateau, every, every storm, every time you open your mouth, that is the focus, the goal and I think if we change our Easter services to really, really zone in on focus on Jesus Christ and about winning the law, because to be truthful, Rick, a lot of times we cater our services and our messages to, uh, to minister to the people that are, you know, the, our, our regular Sunday school meeting people, the people that are members that come, and sometimes there are people that are that, that are lost, they're not really not saved, don't know nothing about, really about this resurrection, and so the message is oftentimes tailored to them. And we just really seek the Father about what is it that you want me to you no know, Easter Sunday message. Nah, thank you, Lord. The message has to always be the same all the time about Jesus Christ, his death, burial, his resurrection, the power, his soon to return, you know, and, 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 and prepare a place for us that we might have a right to the tree of life who's gone so that he can come back and receive us again. We've got to get the people ready. And when they come to our services and all they see is everybody dressed up and everybody's doing their Easter parades and without the service, you got Easter hunts and, and all that other kind of stuff. We're just totally taking the focus off of that. We should tailor the services wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, focusing solely on him. We even go through ex, uh, extra measures to decorate for Easter, for Christmas. Yeah. Well, St. Patrick's Day, whatever the holiday is, we get the church out for that. Yeah, and you're right about that because even in some places when we do, um, uh, you know, a uh, showcase on the resurrection, uh, some churches can go a little bit overboard on the theatrical part about it, and it's not really detailing the message. uh, And I think in a lot of cases you want that, that, you know, that performance to, to fall in line with that message. And in some cases, it's missed. I think uh, one of the best places that uh, does a good job with the resurrection is the church out in Indiana. I can't think of the name of it right now. I've heard about it. Yeah. 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 They do a good job with with, with, uh, a theatrical uh, analogy of the whole thing of Jesus Christ. But we do get to commercialize on it, and our message needs to be 
you know, what it's about. And, but un- unfortunately, what happens a lot of times, Lynn, is that that's the only time that someone hears that message on Easter. Mm-hmm. They hear the resurrection, resurrection mex- message. They're not, it's not something that's talked about on a daily basis uh, or a, mm-hmm. a, a weekly basis. Or when you go to church, you hear it once in a while, but it almost seems like people are saving it just for Easter. And it should be a right. message that you should be talking about all the time. What Jesus died mm-hmm. on the cross for the sins of the world, the the humility that he he gave, you know, to 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 uh, give his life so that we might have a relationship with God. We seem to share that only at uh, the time of Easter, and if you only hear it once, you know, it's like telling a child if you tell him not to touch a stove, and you only tell him once, hey, after a while mm-hmm. he's going to forget it. And so we need to constantly, you know, remind people about what that resurrection message is about. Amen. And not just on Sunday, you know, not, not, just, at, not just at our services, because uh, the truth be told, they're not, they're not coming just on their own, and uh, we got to go and win. we got to go to the highways and the byways, and the Bible declares that we should um, compel them to come. And I can't compel you to come if my life doesn't, if my light isn't shining enough to make me want to listen to what I have to say, or when God does give me, thank you, Holy Spirit, or when God does give me a door of utterance, he opens up a door for me, and then I'm not prepared to minister Jesus. I'm not prepared to take someone through the plan of salvation. I'm not prepared to take them to the scriptures. I'm not prepared to be able to explain to them the resurrection, or why there was a resurrection, or what is the significance of it, and about the fact that there is a resurrection for us as well. And then when we're ill-prepared, and I believe that we're ill-prepared because we spend so much time doctoring on us, me and my needs. I want this, and I need that, I need to learn this, and I want to do that, but I'm not you know, so thirsty about learning how to win souls. They teach us how to um, become financially debt-free. They teach us how to uh, increase, increase. They teach us how to save money coming to me. They teach us all of that. But we have to go back to the beauty and to our assignment. It is everyone's assignment. Yeah. People oftentimes ask me, Pastor Lynn, what, you know, I'm trying to find out what my purpose is, what my, you know, what God called me to. And I tell them, read Matthew 28, you need to go to the highways and byways and to compel men to come to Christ. At the close of the day, Rick and Linda, whatever we do, at the end of it all, we are to be winning souls to Jesus. If I'm not here on this earth just to sing songs. I'm not here just to, uh, you know, of my other gifts and talents that I have. That's how my own, you know, life created me. Those are some of the attributes that I have. But I was designed to give him glory and praise and to win souls. Oh, man. Take somebody I, with us. I like that. And, you know, the Bible says your gift to make room for itself. It's like if you are doing mm-hmm. the word of the Lord, if you are witnessing to God, every gift that you have, God will will make sure that it's used for his glory if that's what you want it to be. You know, this while we're doing this, let's, let's stay together. This is something that we do for God's glory so we can mm-hmm. share God's word with people. And so it's not that, you know, Reverend McCain or Rick McCain or Brenda McCain can receive some accolades. It's all about bringing people to Christ Jesus to our witnessing. And you're right. We do sometimes forget that. And, and the church as a body, as a whole, sometimes we like to focus on mm-hmm. things that the world is dealing with, and so it just it's it's easier because yeah. we can get someone's attention. But the main focus is that we're supposed to br- bring people to Christ, and once they are brought to Christ, we have to go out and witness to other people who are lost about God's glory to bring them to Christ. Okay, well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lynn and Rick and Tracy, how is it that we could step mm-hmm. this up? Because, like you mentioned before, your mom said keep the main point of what the season is all about. All the hoopla and the decorative stuff that the secular Mm -hmm. world brought in, that's superseding everything when it comes to Easter. Because it was right after Valentine's Day. The shelves were stocked with all the cute little Easter stuff, the clothes, Mm -hmm. the decorations. So we're taking the focus off of what it is. But as Christians, like you said, 365, we should be turned up about Jesus Christ. As Rick said, we only talk about it once a year. So, I mean, what we what are we mm-hmm. supposed to step up? I'm trying to get you We said, need to know how can we just, I know we all are witnesses, witness for Christ, but how can we outdo the secular world? Because it seems like we're going off of them, like you said. We're getting their attention, and we're pulling people in the church from that. You know, most people know, oh, I could wear a new outfit that day and go to church. 
why is it just on mm-hmm. Easter Sunday? You know, you so, know that we're all happy going to church, and the people, like I said, haven't been to church up three times a year. You know, Brian, um, and I'm sitting here really quiet listening to everybody, but, you know, I'm fortunate, and I say fortunate, that we go, I attend a church where all the hoopla um, of the dressing and, and, you know, Easter baskets and all of that is not as prevalent, at least in the 6 o'clock sunrise service it isn't, because that's the service that we go to. And I think the reason that the Easter season and the resurrection stands out so much for me is that we do a... Um, a Friday service, a Good Friday service, where it ends in darkness, and you you take a piece of paper and you it represents whatever sins you actually nail it to a cross. And the first time as an adult, I remember doing that. When I hammered that nail into that cross, I felt it. I, I, I mean, it was just so overwhelming for me to do what I was doing and to realize what it symbolized. And then to end that service in complete silence and complete darkness, and then you come back to sunrise service, and and it starts in darkness, and the lights come up, and the sun is shining, and all the beautiful flowers. That just stands out so much for me. So even when I miss regular services or other holidays, I got to be at Easter service because it reminds me that Jesus died you know, for my sins, and he's allowing me to continuously start over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that is just the most compelling, overwhelming service for me. But trust me, 6 o'clock service, and I used to have four small children. I went in jeans a whole lot of days, you know. I mean, it is what it is, and that's how we, you know, are at our church. So that that 6 o'clock service, you coming as you are to get what you came there to get. And so, you know, Lynn, what we've got to work on in our churches, and I thank you for being on the uh, the air with us, is that, We've got to do something that is going to, when you only get that person in there once or twice, we've got to be able to have a message that's so solid that it will bring that person back. Help us out with that. What, 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 you know, we said we shouldn't be commercialized, but what else can we do to make sure on Resurrection uh, Sunday uh, that we, are, we have a message that is going to, you know, compel the person to come back? Well, I believe that if we would return to a place, a, a sincere place, and it's not saying that we all are not doing it, but, but we all, we're, if we got a couple not doing it, then it affects all of us. But I believe that we return to it, everything needs to be done from a foundation of love and in a place of prayer. Isaiah 56 and 7 declares that uh, the Lord says, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and I will make them joyful in my house of prayer and their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. God, the body of Christ as a whole has to return to being tabernacles of prayer, people of prayer. Everything, everything that we need done is going to, going to be able to bring be uh, brought forth to the power of prayer. Some of the things that we're doing, we're doing in our own might, in our own strength. We're making up our own programs. We're doing things according to what pleases us. When if we just seek God, find out what God is saying. What is the heartbeat of the Father? What is the message that you want me to, to declare to these people? And then what is the, the, the uh, simplicity of the gospel? Just keep it simple and keep it loving. And one other thing, my mother is, is, my mother is just um, a ball of love. You know, you know, she has all kinds right now, but when she was declaring the glory of gospel, we would have, uh, she would be in the middle of preaching, and if somebody came into our church that she didn't know, that she had never seen before, in the midst of her talking, she'd find a way to go over there and love on them, embrace them. And every person that ever came to our church always said that they felt love as soon as they came in there. So the people need to feel the love of Christ when they enter in there. And then here's a message coming from a place of love and in the foundation of from a prayer, we'll be able to be a lot more effective in our um, in our delivery of our messages, seeking the Father wholeheartedly. You know, my uh, one of my previous pastors, God bless his soul, I love him so, he told me before when I was studying to preach somewhere, and he said, Lynn, I want you to spend more time in prayer and less time studying. Let your, your greater time be spent in prayer because God, is, you already study, but the greater revelation of what you need to say and the message that God wants to speak to the people, you're going to get that in a place of prayer. And that's the technique that I use now. I 
spend a lot more time praying. I used, to, I used to spend more time studying. Now I spend more time praying, and he gives me the revelation of the message he wants. And it, I don't think it's necessary anything that we're going to be able to do outside of prayer, because he's the one who is going to draw the hearts of the people. No man comes because he draws them. So we pray that he draws them, and then when they come, we're ready and equipped to, to, to do the work, to compel them, to convince them, to bring them on in with the love and the prayer and the embrace that they feel and the powerful message that you got from, from, the, from, uh, from the throne of God himself telling you what, you what he wants you to speak today. Not no Easter sermon or, you know, like they do Mother's Day, they make a Mother's Day sermon for Mother's Day. Just preach the gospel, please. So let me ask you this, uh, Lynn. Uh, where is your church at before we get off the air? It's an outreach ministry. Yeah, we hold services inside Trade Market Recovery Home. I don't have the traditional church anymore. When my mother took ill with the Alzheimer's, we actually closed the uh, the ministry, and then God opened up for me to go down to Haymarket, the recovery home, and I do uh, services there. So we named it City of Believers Outreach Ministry, Amen. and that's why I preach this great gospel every Sunday from so one to three. Nine thirty two West Washington. Nine thirty two West Washington. Hey, Lynn, we appreciate uh, you sharing with us on that. Uh, I know we had, like, usually the 10 questions, but uh, spiritually I just didn't know that that was something that would be uh, something that we should follow up with after this powerful message that you just gave us now. So uh, I'm not going to do that with you today. I appreciate you just sharing with us uh, about the Word of God and what resurrection really means. And uh, before we let you off the air, can you just again tell them where that location is, where they can find you? For uh, your yes. powerful preaching, <laughs> every Sunday from one p.m. until three p.m. I'm at Haymarket. We're inside the Haymarket facility, nine thirty-two West Washington. Um, uh, inside the, um, we're in the A building in the chapel. Write that address: nine thirty-two West Washington in Chicago. Hey, L- one we, time, you said one. Oh, one p.m. until three p.m. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Hey, well, Lynn, we thank you very much for being on the air with us. We'll definitely have you back again to share the more powerful word of God, okay? Amen. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Brenda and Tracy. God bless you. you. Happy Easter. God bless you. Happy Easter. God bless you, too. Stay with us, everyone, because coming up next is on on the McCain train is our point of view by Donna Terrell. Thank you for listening to the Let's Stay Together show. We'll be right back after these commercial breaks. 